YHVH or YHWH, depending on whether you, you call a letter a V or a W in Hebrew. And anciently, it was a, it was a W, now it's a V, you know, in modern Hebrew. And so the name of God, is that. Okay. And we read it backwards. So this is called a yacht. That's a hay. That's a bob or a wall, depending on you know, your translation. And then that's another hay. So what, you know, YHVH or YHWH. And so the second portion that gets the creation all over again gives Yahweh or Jehovah as the, the name of the God that created everything. However, the, we, we always see Lord, a Lord God. And I'll talk in a minute about why we, why we see that. Okay, so if we compare and study Hebrew scripture, Christian scripture, and also look at Canaanite religious beliefs, you know, as far as we can tell, you know, with, the, with, the, with everything that's, that's left. We look at the Ugaritic language as well as Arabic, we can see, you know, how things may have developed and, and what might be going on there. And we can, and we, when we do comparisons of, of Jehovah to El and Baal out of the Canaanite religions, they're basically the same person. They're a warrior <coughs> God that fights for his people. And early enough in, in Hebrew religion, not only do we have a God, but we also have God's consort. In the form of Asherah. So we got we got a heavenly father and a heavenly mother. Maybe the Mormons got that one. <laughs> okay. So Asherah was the consort of God. And in many archaeological finds of homes, they find these little, um, little altar things that have two seats in them, and sometimes figurines, and so they have God and the goddess. And the southern Israelites, the, the Jews, the, the house of Judah, kingdom of Judah, got rid of Asherah because they wanted the temple in one place. Asherah's priests could go to any mountaintop and sacrifice. The northern kingdom priests could go to anywhere and sacrifice. Their temple or any kind of mountaintop. The, the house of Judah consolidated everything in, in Israel, southern Israel. So we can see a lot of different similarities between these, these gods of the area. And when we look at archaeology, we can see, yes, the the Israelites basically came out of Canaanite stock. So they were, you know, they came out of the people that they lived amongst. All right, so how many different names does God have? A whole bunch. <laughs> and typically they're, they're constructed names to give some sort of idea about what God is like. And so if you take them as a whole, you can maybe get some idea of what God is. Maybe. Who knows? So, uh, a few names. El Shaddai, the initial name that uh, was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, I'm God Almighty. El Israel, God of Israel. El Alam, the eternal God. El Amen, the God of truth. Now, those are all names that start with E-L, which is the same name that the Canaanites <coughs> used for God. Then we have Elah, okay, which is another name for God. There's a whole bunch of different uh, theories about where that one came from, whether it was an oak tree in power or, or it just means strength or whatever. A lot of different ideas of where that came from. So they, you may hear just Elah as God. Elah Shemaiah, God of heaven. Elah Shemaiah Barah, uh, God of heaven and earth. Elah Jerusalem, God of Jerusalem. Okay, so a number of different names that way. And then you also see Elohe or Elohim mixed with things. Elohe Mishpat, the God of justice. <coughs> Elohim Kedoshim, the holy God. Elohim Kaim, the living God. 
All right, so you know, you take all these names, and, and this is just a few. There's pages of them. All sorts of different names. If you take all the names together, you might get an idea, maybe, of what, what God's like. It talks about justice, talks about you know being a, a jealous God, this God, that God, the whole thing here. So you could say, oh, well, this just shows that there's lots of different gods. No. This shows that there were lots of attributes of God that people were trying to, to show. That God was the Almighty. You know, he, this was the actual God of Israel. Not, it wasn't God of somebody else. It was our God. You know, our God of Israel. You know, he was eternal. God of truth. Etc. 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 Okay, so Elohim is just one of the various names of God, but it isn't God's actual name. Okay, so, which, which we know, looking at, at the Hebrew Scripture, is you know, Jehovah in English. All right, now, Mormon belief about God. This is from the 1984 Temple Center that I went through, I don't know how many times. That, that version. Um, this may make some people a little queasy. I'm actually giving things out of, out of the temple center. 1984. Um, I've been asked, uh, what about your covenants? Covenant is a two-way street. It's not just one way. I kept my covenant until I was lied to. There is no more covenant. I have no covenant anymore with the Mormon church, especially since they asked me to leave. <laughs> uh, I had the state president call me and say, you got two choices. You either resign or we excommunicate you. I resign. My family went with me. I'm one of the lucky ones. So here we have Elohim talking to Jehovah and Micah. See, yonder is matter unorganized. Go ye down and organize it into a world like unto the worlds that we have heretofore formed. Call your name is the first thing to bring you. It's going to be a little bit uh, familiar to a lot of people. Right. We've got Elohim talking. We've got Jehovah talking. We've got Michael talking. He was also who? Adam. From Brigham Young, thought was. Okay. And, and they take matter that's unorganized. This is a problem because now God has left the realm of the divine and is part of the realm of the mundane. If we look at the, the first part of, of Genesis, there's two words in there. In there. Tohu, Mabohu. In some versions in English, that's considered unformed and disorganized. However, if you look at those two words and compare them to Arabic and Ugaritic texts, it means a lot of different things, which also includes not, you know, desolate and non-existent. Desolate non existent. Tohu is, is uh, similar to the uh, Arabic word for desert. Desert's pretty desolate, especially over there. You know, when you get just into the, into the sand. And it's also the same in Ugaritic, which is an early, early language that predates uh, Hebrew. And so, this, if we look at this in a, in a, in a strict sense, fairly strict sense, we can, we can get to the point where we, we can say, yes, it was created from nothing. There was nothing there. However, if we look at the English translations, the King James Version, totally different idea. Totally different idea. And so we have Elohim different than Jehovah, which we know is a misnomer because of looking at the Torah. And we have Michael, who sometimes you know, is known in some circles as God. Father Adam, creating everything from stuff that already existed, which in a, in a theological sense is problematic. 
because we've taken God out of the realm of the divine and we've brought God down to the level of man. We've made God an anthropomorphic man, an anthropomorphic God. And so God is no longer God, you know, something that's, that is om omniscient, omnipresent, everywhere, everything and nothing, was, is, and shall be forever, into somebody that had a beginning at some point, and who knows if they'll have an end at some point.